Hi, welcome back to Elite Literary Book Group. I'm Rachel Beck, and I'm going to go through a couple more um, AP questions, but I'm going to do it with um, Maya and Tania. And the reason why, well, I'm going to do two because there's so much I want to say about this book that it, if I tried to do it, it, it would just sound so convoluted. And um, so I'm going to break it in, into two discussions. So this is from 2010. You can leave home all you want, but home will never leave you, Sansare Tate. Sansare Tate's statement, and sometimes they do start you with a quote there to kind of give you a, a hint where this is going and what you ought to be coming up with in your claim and, and what you're going to say. So it suggests that home may be um, conceived as a dwelling place or a state of mind. It may have a positive or, or negative associations, but in either case, it may have a considerable influence on an individual. But I'm sure it does. Uh, choose a novel or a play in which the central character leaves home, yet finds that home remains significant. Write a well-developed essay in which you analyze the importance of home to this character and the reasons for its continuing influence. Explain how the character's idea of home eliminates the larger meaning of the work. And then it says don't summarize the plot. So, okay, so when I think about this in my Antonia, um, first let me just give you some background on the book. Okay, Willa Cather is writing um, in the late, well, she was going to school in the late 1800s, and then she was writing like in the early 1900s. Um, so this was a long time ago. <laughs> okay. And when she was about 10 years old, the same age as the protagonist, her family who lived in, in Virginia was kind of torn by the Civil War. I think she, it was a grandfather that um, sided with the Union or, and did something. I think they helped a slave along the way or something like that. Um, there was a suspicious house fire. Uh, people were threatening them. And she had both people on both sides, though. Um, so, you know, she was very torn, as many people would have been. They go to Nebraska, and the description of this book with Jim Burden, he's riding kind of in a, in a train, and then he's taking this wagon into the Great Plains of Nebraska. And so it's similar, but of course she's going to change some some things. But I think Willa Cather's best novels are when she goes back to her childhood in Nebraska. And it's, it's something that she also says that, you know, what a writer, um, the material that a writer has is usually accumulated by the age of 15. So that proves to be true for her. Uh, when she tries to explore other things in her later novels, there's there's some parts that just fall flat. Like Hemingway really criticized her for um, one of ours because of course she's writing a, a war scene and Hemingway's been to war and you know he's making fun of her that she's only seen it on TV. Well, most of us have. So <laughs> she is using her imagination. But where where nobody can dispute her is her idea of the pioneer because that's basically what they were doing in this really this book my Antonia ties into the American dream very well but not in the way like the great Gatsby even though she is saying something about materialism and I'll, I'll say something about that in the end as we try to look at it as a whole but we want to focus on Jim's first experience in coming to this land and it's also kind of like a heroic journey whereas he's an orphan we just know that both his parents died and he's going to live with his grandparents who he probably has never seen and let me just read this one quote that stands out the wagon jolted on carrying me I knew not whither I don't think I was homesick if we ever if we never arrived it didn't not matter. Between that earth and that sky, I felt erased, blotted out. I did not say my prayers that night. 
here I felt what would be would be. Now this is sort of an interesting um, approach to it. You know, it's a builder's roman. It's a coming of age story. Um, but notice he says he's erased. He's blotted out, and he's in this country with just interminable plains, land. He's used to seeing trees and hills and, you know, something in this. I had the same experience when I moved to Oklahoma. I was like, oh my God, this is the flattest place on earth. It's, it's almost like you could just walk right off. There's nothing. And it kind of reminds you of, of a wasteland. But there's also some very beautiful aspects to it, too. Um, but this is really like a pioneer not having anything to work with. Like he says that the country itself was not like country at all, but the coarse material that countries are made of. This is the stuff that we're starting with. And so you see how you can connect that with like the American dream. He's blotted out. He doesn't come with any identity already given to him. His parents are gone. His friends are gone. His schoolmates, anything that had kind of molded him and said, hey, this is who you are. You are this person. You live here. That None of it's gone. All of that's gone. So just imagine, in a way, how freeing that would be. Of course, it would be a tragedy to lose your parents. Don't get me wrong. But in terms of like a heroic journey to go into a new land not knowing anything and the and the and the men that, that greet him he says you know they could have walked right out of jesse james it's like he's he's in a story and of course this is going to make a huge impression there's a lot of adventure to it there's a lot of fear and together it makes a lot of excitement <laughs> and especially for for a child um and I think it, it was the same feeling, and, and she actually says this, Willa Cather said that it, she felt she was erased when she went. Um, but I would make a case that that is almost a sign of freedom to be erased and, and to start new. And, you know, they, they meet a lot of other families who are immigrants, and they are coming with nothing. The, um, Shimmerdods are the Bohemian family, and this is where Antonia comes in. And the Bohemian family, they don't know anything about farming. They don't have any materials. They've had to sell all their things. Um, they have nothing to start with. They have nothing to cook with. Uh, they don't know how to take care of themselves. And their house is like a dugout. If you think about it, there's no trees really to, to build like log houses. Jim Burden is one of his character. He's the only one that's kind of privileged enough to actually have a, a wooden frame home. But his neighbors have these like dugouts, like sod homes. Or it, it literally built into the earth. And uh, Jim's grandmother refers to their home as like a badger hole. And there's, you know, five of them or so living there. And Antonia is this just bright, beautiful um, little girl that's probably about 14 because she's like four, four years older than Jim. And she just immediately latches on to him and their friends. And he helps her learn English and helps her little sister. And the family is always having to kind of look out for the um, the Shimmerdas. And there's there's this Christian Protestant kindness to Jem's family, which really informs him in his in his home um, experience. In a way, Jim is gonna be much more of an old soul, partly because he is raised by his grandparents. And he is out of out of the city life. He is on a prairie. So that's really going to inform his traditions and, and his view of the world and the way things ought to be. But he does get a little irritated with uh, his grandparents always having to help out the Shimmerdoss because he doesn't really like the, the mother of, 
of Antonia. He says she's just a boastful, conceited thing. And um, she's somebody who's got her kids practically starving. And the grandmother even says, you know, you never know what kind of characteristics are going to come out of a person, you know, like when they're when they're going through like a depression or something and in poverty, um, they may become a little greedy. I mean, that's just that they can't help it. And so when she goes to the the Burden's house and she looks around for the first time and she sees they have cooking stuff and they have furniture and they have bedrooms and, you know, all these kind of things that we take for granted. She's running around and she's like looking at her pot and says, you know, you you got many. Shimmer dolls, we don't have any. And the grandmother gives her it and Jim looks at this and says in his mind, like, this is weak minded. You know, you got to tell this woman no sometimes. And, and sometimes they do some things that are, are not very nice. <laughs> but, um, and, and there is a time when they do get into a fight. Not, not the father and the grandmother really, but more of the, the working men when they don't get their tools back. Or, you know, they do something. But the father really, his grandfather demonstrates um, forgiveness. When he doesn't get his things back. Or when he doesn't get paid for the cow that he loaned them, you know, on a certain agreement. She paid half. She's never been able to pay the rest of it. He comes over there. She's trying to hide the cow. Um, and he says, well, why don't we just forget about the cow? You know, um, it, it shows you what, how people survived. You know, they needed each other to survive. And what's so rich about this story is that yeah, it's an American story built on a lot of immigrant stories. There's a lot of stories told like oral tradition. And, you know, they didn't have like the acts passed at this time about where's your papers, you know, and, and like, can you be in this country or not? No, if you could survive and get there, you could stay. But guess what? It was going to be extremely hard. So this this value of hard work and people coming together and that you, you know, you are, there's a, a part of the Bible, you know, am I my brother's keeper? And sometimes you have to kind of ask yourself that. I mean, you don't want people to take advantage of you, but at the same time, yeah, <laughs> you are. <laughs> and this is something that Jim kind of has to learn. But going back to the topic of, of home and, and the impact it has, it can also be a negative impact if it's homesickness and Antonia's father um, goes through a severe depression and he, um, he ends up committing suicide and this was based on a real story that that Cather had heard so in, in this in this essay I would I would want to try to point out two things and and I would be kind of going in the same direction with both of them about why homes is so important to who we are, and um, and how we we live. I mean, his the Mr. Shimmer does, just doesn't feel like life is worth living anymore. He's lost his friends and where he was respected, and you know now he can't take care of his family, and this pioneer stuff it ain't for everybody. You know he's like a musician. I want to read this part where Aunt. Antonia is talking to Jim, and Jim's not being very sympathetic at this point. I think it was right after the whole pot thing. Um, but she's she's talking about, I'm worried about my dad. He's depressed. And he she says, he don't like this country, Antonia tells Jim. To which Jim replies, people who don't like this country ought to stay home. Then Antonia rebuttals with the real reason they came here. Um, I think I added that. <laughs> uh he he not want to come to this country never he, she burst out my mom make him make him come all the time she say america big country much money much land for my boys much husband for my girls and papa he cried to leave his old friends we used to make music with him he loved very much the man who played the long horn like this and she indicated a slide trombone they go to school together and they are friends from boys but mama she want ambrosh to be rich with many cattle. Your mama, I said angrily, wants other people's things. 
Your grandfather is rich, she retorted fiercely. Why he not help my papa? Ambrose be rich, too, after a while, and pay back. He's a very smart boy, for Ambrose, my mommy, came here. And Ambrose is the oldest son, and so everything's kind of deferred to him. Everything is about him. And he's not even really that. He's a, he's a very shady character. But you see that when the grandfather dies, you also see that he's very devout. Uh, he, he, he stays with his rosary. And he, he prays and prays and prays because they're praying for his soul. So here we see kind of the dark side of the American dream as well. It's an idea. It's an illusion. And, it, you know, things really aren't ever really what you think they're going to be. But they certainly are not what you think it's going to be when you're on the other side of the world hearing about it. You know, and the sad tragedy about them is they probably would have been better off if they, if they did stay in the old country. They've made, in a way, their life harder, chasing after their dreams, which, of course, we all do that. But it's almost kind of running parallel to uh, Jim's ideals and dreams as well. Uh, you see that Jim, in the very beginning of the book, and I'm going to talk more about the introduction in the, in the next video because it's very important to this book, but you learn that, you know, later on, he's going to marry into money. He becomes, you know, a lawyer, but he marries into someone who, and this would have been very important at this time, who already had money, so you kind of marry into a status. Doesn't sound like Jim at all. <laughs> and it, and you wonder, how can he be happy with that? And, the, and you know, the old friend, who I think is supposed to be, like Willa Cather says, I never liked his wife. You know, she never gave any real feeling to any of the things that she, you know, advocated for. It was just like she was bored. She was just trying to find things to do, charities and so forth. But that lack of feeling that, you know, and, and, she, and she even mentions that, that Jim irritates her with his passions and so forth. So you wonder about that match <laughs> when you learn so much about Jim, about what what he really values. And when he, when he comes back to see Antonia, and Antonia, even her father could not survive, but even through tragedy, she thrives. And the part of, uh, you know, the, the thing about Antonia is she is all the things that Jim values the hard work, the sacrifice. She's a wonderful mother to her children, but she's also a very strong worker. She becomes like a man in the fields with her brother, and she's competitive with him, and she likes it better. And then she goes to town and gets in a little trouble there. She ends up getting pregnant. She's a single mom. He leaves her. She goes back to the fields. She works again, and, and she... She's unbreakable, you know. She, you know, later on in life, she, she, you know, she's lost her teeth, and she doesn't, she doesn't look, you know, she looks like she's been battered, but Jim says not diminished. There's a strength in her that you don't see in most women, and that's what he likes. But that's not what he marries. And when he comes back to see Antonia, he says, "You know, Antonia, since I've been away." I think of you more often than anyone else in this part of the world. I'd like to have you for a sweetheart or wife or my mother or sister, anything that a woman could be to a man. The idea of you is part of my mind. You influence my likes and dislikes, all my taste, hundreds of times when I don't realize it. You really are a part of me. She turned her bright, believing eyes to me, and tears came and up at them slowly. How can it be like that when you know so many so many people, and when I've disappointed you so, ain't it wonderful, Jim, how much people can mean to each other? I'm so glad we had each other when we were little. I can't wait till my little girl's old enough to tell her about the things we used to do. You always remember me when you think about old times, won't you? And I guess everybody thinks about old times, even the happiest people. And so how would I bring this all to a close in showing the, the overall meaning of the work. Um, you know, K 
Cather is kind of like Thomas Hardy, which I've talked about, but an American writer. She doesn't want to change with the times. She's not going to write more about modern issues because she's nostalgic in a way. This is, she wants to talk about things that are worth preserving. And as unconventional as she was, and I'll talk about a little bit about that in the next video, there was a nostalgia in her um, where she, you know, she valued family life, eating at the table, prayers, helping out your neighbor, loving one another. It, she didn't, she kind of turned away from the materialistic side of it and focused on the meaning of being able to create this civilization and what it took and the sacrifice and the fact that people had to come together. And that was really for her what what home meant. There's something sacred there and there's something sacred in the land and it's worth preserving. But and I guess in my claim and my argument in this particular essay, what I would probably argue is that, you know, the homesickness from Mr. Shimmerdas compared with Jim I don't think Jim should have left home either and going in East and, you know, becoming very successful. Um, I, I would have to try to make some kind of argument about that chasing, chasing your dreams. I think this is what Cather's saying basically is, is that chasing the American dream, chasing materialism in your dreams is always going to leave you dissatisfied in the way. Because you never will get back the fullest satisfaction, which would comes from the material of childhood. All right, so I'll close it there. And then I'm going to do another one that's going to have a little bit of a feminist perspective as to why the title is My Antonia. All right, so join me for the next one. Thanks. Bye.